Welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. I'm more than meets the eye. Oh no. How are you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing well. Just coming right along. Awesome, awesome. Trying to do all the pony work. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, also joining us today is Jacob. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? Oh, well, uh, the week could have gone better, but, well, it's just gone, oh, gone better now. <laughs> Uh, it, it's all good. Like it, <laughs> everybody. Um, things can go better, but hey, uh, we, we roll with the cards we're dealt. So, anywho, yeah. uh, in today's episode review, we are going to review the third issue of uh, how do I even see this title? Transformers: The Magic of Cybertron. Uh, and in this issue, give me a second, uh, Octavia. Octavia Melody, oh yeah, that's her full name. Octavia Melody and Vinyl Scratch and the Young Six and Soundwave work together to get out of a pre precautious precautious uh, pre precarious precarious pre precarious. Thank you. Precarious situation and Rarity teams up with Ratchet and Knockout to free some of their allies from King Sombrero. Uh, contr control, yes. Um. <clears throat> so, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, let's see here. I mean, these were fun issues. I would say that uh, as Soundwave got a pretty big uh, part in the last crossover, it feels like we're we're revisiting a character mostly because he's one of the most popular Decepticons. Uh, I was more intrigued by Rarity and Knockout. Ooh. Um, I, I would like to know more about Knockout later on, but uh, this is first impressions. Well, th those are my first impressions. Ah, all right, then. Uh, Jacob, what about you? Well, uh, it's a good time all around, mostly. I mean, the first one is done by Tony Flix, uh, all uh, the writing, the art. And the second and one the colors. Done... Don't forget the yeah. colors. He, he did them too. When I saw oh, that, yeah. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> he did what? <laughs> Yeah, mm. and the <laughs> second one we, uh, was done by James Asmus with uh, Priscilla Tramontano making a comeback, and we've established in the last issue that she's gotten better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Give her time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's it. All right, then. and as for me, um, this comic was fun. Like I, I had a lot of fun reading it. Uh, the interaction between all the characters in the first part was a lot of fun <laughs> um we, we do see a bit of uh, sound waves development in this world and universe and whatnot and yeah it is a lot of fun it is a lot of fun uh second issue makes me wonder like wow uh could we get more because i want to see the world expand <clears throat> but but that's that, that's later on that's for later on so anyway if you guys at home have not read this comic yet Pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So we start off the comic well with our heroes, Octi and Vinyl, in Cybertron, wondering um, what the hell is going on here. And uh, we kind of need to save the princess and whatnot, but we, we, we'll just have to uh, hide and plan. And as they go to a dark alley, which I'm sure nothing bad can go wrong, they meet up with the student six. Uh, the student six here mentioned that they were at a uh, call. Oh yeah, they were they were at a concert. Uh, Coloratura. Coachella. Coach Coachella. There's a new character, right? So it's a place. Coachella. We were all at Coachella. Cult. Chella. Coachella. Huh. I'm not oh yeah, it's a play on words. I'm not sure what the reference is to, honestly. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Coachella. Oh, which is taking part in April this year. Oh, cool. But what is it? <laughs> 
Uh, the Golden Voice presents in Indio Coachella, Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival. Ah, so it's an ah. art festival. So yeah, that's not a transformer place. It's a pony pun, mm-hmm, but a pony place. So, uh, like I was saying, uh, they were hanging out at Coachella, and suddenly they got transported into the Transformers universe, which raises a lot of questions on how that happened. But that's besides the point. So anywho, uh, the ponies are bummed out because, well, they want to get back and get their groove on. But uh, they overheard Final and Octi talking about Princess Twilight being mind controlled and whatnot. And the student, uh, they have a divide. Uh, Gallus and... Smolder wants to rescue the princess while uh, Silverstream, Sandbar, and Ocellus wants to go home. I'm not 100% sure about Yona because she's best at arguing. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so, the adults here just says, Enough, we are going to the speech bridge and whatnot and we're taking you home. This right here is not the place... Uh, this place right here right now is dangerous, so no. But before they can uh, continue any further, sound wave comes in and kind of interrupts them. And still, still having one track mind, right on the lane, sorry, right on the lane, is trying to capture all the equestrians to siphon their magical powers. Before he captures them, he asks Lord Megatron. What should we do? If I do get them, what do we do? <laughs> and having enough of this, uh, Gallus and Smolder attack Soundwave and it doesn't go well because the roof drops. And I'm going to pause here. Silver, what do you think so far? Well, I mean, this is the exact opposite of the mu- uh, music performance. You're supposed to raise the roof. Uh, That's I, I, I think the beats are too hard, yo. Well, it is a little weird that Octavia is apparently a telepath, as she can read exactly what Vinyl wants uh, to do uh, without any words. I mean, in the uh, in the Slice of Life event, uh, they were communicating through music. I don't know what they're doing now. Um... Or maybe uh, Vinyl's just using sign language. Probably. Could be. Which is impressive, considering she doesn't have fingers. (laughs) (laughs) But it could be one of those convenient factors where... Okay, um, a good example of this is with Rocket Raccoon and Groot. Well, I am uh, man, that language. Apparently, that is an actual language. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, here's a fun fact: If you oh. bought the Guardian of the Galaxy game on wherever you can play it, and if you finish the first run and you played it again on New Game Plus, you can play the game with a translated Groot, where he talks in normal English. <laughs> well, that just sounds trippy. Trippy, I, I say. Know. I haven't even watched that Let's Play, but that should be fun to see what he's really saying all the time. <laughs> I'm good. Translation, you're an idiot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, also, uh, it's, it's also a bit weird for Soundwave to not know what's going on. I mean, <clears throat> Vinyl Octavia show themselves as true heroes. This looks like the job for someone else. Let's hide. <laughs> I mean, but did they really do that? I, I I think they kind of said that, okay, let's just hide for a bit so we can plan and strategize, right? Uh, well, say, I think the only sensible thing is to do is stay back and find a way, stay hidden and find a way back, I'm assuming, to Equestria. Mm. But technically, they're not really combatants. They're mostly just civilians. True, but it's kind of hard to root for them when they're like, okay, let's hide. But here's my thing with Soundwave. 
Soundwave has the highest uh, sensitive audio receptors in the entire galaxy. Really? I mean, he can hear... Here's how delicate he can hear things. When In the IDW comics, when Megatron gave up being a Decepticon and actually joined the Autobots, Soundwave could hear the change in his uh, chest icon. Oh. That Megat- Megatron was wearing an Autobot signal. Ooh. Presumably, I don't know, particles were hitting the surface differently. So for him to not know that Sombra has taken over or that there's something very different going on, it's just a, it's a reduction in Soundwave's power at the moment. Yeah, but, I was going to mention that. Uh, I'm surprised that Soundwave figured out only just now that his superior has been acting off. I mean, you think with his name that he keeps at least one uh, ear online constantly. Mm-hmm. Especially but, since in G1, before being a boombox, I recall he was disguised as a listening post. Really? Really? What? At least that's not... Oh, he was... He was definitely a spy. Uh, in the cartoon, I never was quite sure what he transformed into. It looked like a street lamp. Really? But yes, he was an infiltrator, and he did... Uh, he did spy a whole heck of a lot. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I did not know that. I always thought he was a boombox. Uh, sorry, anyway, um, what well, well, I was trying to say that um, for Soundwave not really knowing about Lord Megatron's uh, thing and whatnot, he could be dealing with magic, which is new for him. Oh, he he, but he'd hear something he, w- he didn't know. <clears throat> Probably. Mm, okay. Plus, Sombra was hardly... Uh, Subtle in his entrance. Also, don't forget that uh, Megatron did bless him in the face. What, Soundwave? Well, then I think you should be very aware that something's wrong. Yeah, so uh, continuity (laughs) is undone. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, once you really, once you realize that it's, eh, yeah, okay, problem there. Okay. So, I mean, I know, I like Soundwave, he's one of the coolest Decepticons, one of the coolest Transformers, but I feel like this was a chance we could have had, like, Blaster work with these uh, ponies. Ah, man, Blaster's not that great. (laughs) Oh, oh, you bite your tongue, son. Compared to Soundwave? I know, no, all talk, no shock. (laughs) Let me borrow that Linkara, um, Linkara meme, Soundwave is superior. (laughs) <laughs> so oh, if it, they they have taken that line and drilled it into the ground <laughs> but it's all <almost> true <laughs> I know but it only works in small doses you can't have some way of saying it every bloody episode <laughs> wait what really thanks Transformers Cyberverse <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah here it is he was a lamp post apparently what really no oh. Cyber- well, he was this in Cyber- was very Tron? illuminating. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! What was this? Was the very start of the G one cartoon? Uh, mm, uh, mm, mm, wait, uh, mm, mm, uh, okay. I'm trying to remember what was Soundwave in the Bay film. He was a car. Uh, a waste. <laughs> uh, also true. He was part of a. He hacked into a satellite, but I don't think he ever transformed. <laughs> mm. What did you say was true, always. And he sounded like Dr. Claw because they didn't add the uh, the robotic distortion no, to his voice. No. So you don't do that. Yes. Yes. So he was like, they got the original voice actor, and it was Dr. Claw. That's a waste. Why? <laughs> I told you he was a waste. See? We're all in agreement. Oh, God. I mean, like, you, okay, <laughs> how do I put this? It's like, you, you get thing Peter Cullen to voice Optimus Prime, but tell him to voice Optimus Prime like how he does another character. The fuck? Uh, the character's name is The Fuck? Wow. That must have been the adu- adults' <laughs> cartoons. Probably. Oh, man, that was a waste. Anyway, uh, I'm What the hell am I looking at? What is this even? What are you even looking at? <laughs> oh, there's Soundwave? Really? From return uh, right, uh, R O T F. What's that again? 
Rise of the Machines, whatever it is. I, that's Rise the, of the Fallen. Oh, uh, Revenge of the Fallen. Yeah, Revenge of the Fallen. If I'm not mistaken, that was supposed to be a satellite in space. Yeah, but look, he's got red eyes. Uh, technically, he does have red eyes. Uh, if you take, check out the comic, he does have red visors. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's just it. It's, it's eyes <laughs> and not a visor. <sighs> I am... Uh, so, so, Look, every time Michael Bay fails the Transformers community, a nerd get, gets to wing off. <laughs> True. Anyway, uh, Jacob, what about you, man? What do you well, think about this so far? <laughs> well, uh, I think I just about said, uh, well, what I, did, what I just did. So far, so good, though. <laughs> so far, so good. All right. Then. Anyway, <clears throat> let's continue on. So as the pillars crash down on them, uh, they're they're kind of trapped. They're they're kind of trapped in a situation where no one can really do much, and they start arguing with one another. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, what you see? Um, let's see. Uh, it's what Soundwave. Uh, I I think what um what this one uh, Gallus Gallus here taunts Soundwave to try and get them out, and he says. Witness the strength of Soundwave because Soundwave is superior, and as he does so, not even a dent, a scratch, but not a dent. I'm and confused. If Cybertronian uh, still is impervious, uh, how is the high is he going to destroy it? He he was trying to prove a point. <laughs> so okay, to... you pitch it on this. Oh no! Uh, okay, what he mentioned here is that okay. Uh, we are under 500 tons of Cybertronian steel. This barrier is coated in impervious alloy. There's not one trick. There is not one among you who could break it, uh, break through either. So that's what he's saying. But uh, a sonic blast is the only way. So basically, Soundwave is te te technically Soundwave is the only person or creature or whatever it is able to destroy. The barrier until all these students six look at vinyl, <laughs> and vinyl just says, "Oh, I'm about to drop my base cannon." <clears throat> but it doesn't work. Yeah, because it, it's not it's not strong enough. But it does a job, and it does a job. Oh my god! When, when they say that, <laughs> oh, <laughs> when, when when they say the line, "Oh, she's." Uh, Sorry, uh, when Soundwave just asked, uh, what is the cool one doing? He knows, uh, he, he knows who's the cool one here. Uh, and <laughs> Game recognizes game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Osana just says, sick beats. And she's letting it build up and boom, she's firing the base cannon. When, when they say the line, the base cannon, automatically it goes to that one animation way back when where... Um, the Living Tombstone made a song and they used that track. Oh my god, that was just so dumb and awesome. Uh, you guys remember the one I'm talking about? Not sure I do. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, uh, talk about yourself for a bit. I'm going to find that tr thing and show it to you guys. Talk, I say. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm sort of gearing up for a sun wave second attack. To be honest, ah. mostly I'm wondering where did Vinyl get that stage? <laughs> That's another good one. Uh, I mean, is this this is like a very specific lesser Pinkie Pie power? She can pull things from the fourth pocket, or is it the fifth pocket? Uh, but only related to a stage. <laughs> I don't know. You should probably also ask why the sound wave turned from a boombox into a fifty foot giant. Well, that's been a question since G1's early days, along with how stupid are humans that they can see that big old Decepticon logo and still think, oh, free radio. Silver, you, you see that while I was driving on the streets today, I saw a car that, that, that have a Decepticon logo on it. See, you're aware. <laughs> but at the same time, too, like, I'm just thinking, oh, you pleb. Why is he a pleb? 
because he's doing it because it's cool and he's putting it at the bumper of the car or the back of the car instead of putting somewhere where it could represent the logo at the front. You know what? Nerd talk. No, no, no. <sighs> God damn it. <clears throat> no, I mean, I think you've got a case of logo envy. Uh, I, a little. So, <laughs> eh. Are you sure you don't? You sure you don't want to go out and buy a Decepticon sticker, slap it on, like, your, your computer or something? No, man. What I'm thinking is I want to buy a decal of one of the ponies, cutie mark, and slap it uh, to the side of my car. Yeah, yeah. So then you can say your car really has horsepower? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you, you can say it's 20% faster. <laughs> Uh, that joke will never die. Okay, anyway. Um, that's the thing I was talking about. YouTube link. Uh, watch it on your own free time. <clears throat> so, anywho. Continuing on. <laughs> uh, base cannon. Uh, <clears throat> so, even after Vinyl's base cannon attack, it didn't really went through. So, Soundwave, not wanting to um, be showed up, he calls in Ravager and... Laser beak to attack the barrier, and Osellus just says "kitty" because Ravager is a kitty. Uh, Panther is it? A uh, yes, something to that effect. Mm -mm -mm. So uh, they attack the barrier or the wall, and nope, nope, not gonna work. As they are, is, is it a panther or a jaguar? Mm -mm. Either or, I think. Anyway, um, while, while you do some research on that, I'm going to continue on for a bit. So, even with all that strong attack, uh, it didn't leave a... It, it didn't go through. It's, they're still stuck. Um, Silverstream is panicking and whatnot. And Vinyl has an idea. And the only way to for them to get out is for them to work together. Having a truce. Um, Soundwave here just says, No, my mission is to acquire your energy. And Osella just says, Then what if we just give it to you? And Soundwave just says, You just give it? Uh, you just give us your magic? Uh, okay, truce then. And I I'm just wondering, like, the magic that he's thinking of is different from what the students are thinking because um, the students' magic come from friendship. Yes. Friendship. Oh, wait, let me do that again. Friendship. <laughs> yep. To that effect. So, anywho, uh, once they have an alliance, a truce, uh, Vinyl just pops in and did a bit of modification on Soundwave and boom, she has a stage with speakers and a um, record player on. <clears throat> and Vinyl just calls Octi up to stage to uh, join her on this adventure. Um, all Octi just says, wait, uh, I, I'm acoustic. I, I, I don't do stuff. Uh, but, you know, um, in harmony, to, together in harmony, blah, blah, blah. So they'll perform as a trio and do stuff. So with all that sound power, uh, they combine their talents and powers to unleash a massive a massive power whatever they have and blow up the wall uh i'm questioning here like wait are those uh what were they called uh kelpie no. yes thank you windigos are, are those windigos <laughs> Because uh, I know that their their beat goes and the beat goes on and on <laughs> and on and on and on. Yeah, so like I'm just thinking, are those really goals? No, right? No, okay. So anywho, <clears throat> with that, uh, they escape, and they they just say, "Wow, that was awesome!" and blah 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 blah. 
and Soundwave sh- still trying to contact uh, Megatron, and all he hear is "All Hail King Sombra, Eternal Ruler Cybertron," and okay, that's not good at all because Soundwave, your master is not in the right set of uh, not in the right state of mind. So he agrees to help with the ponies to kind of save Cybertron. And chapter ends. Yay. <clears throat> so, anybody want to say anything before I move on to the next one? Well, well I just remember, before we start, I was wondering what the, the whole thing with, uh, was it, um, crap, I forgot what's the blue uh, main, uh, uh, Blue main pony call again. Uh, Blue? Uh, vinyl. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. vinyl scratch. Uh, when vinyl built up the boom box into uh, sound wave, I was wondering where I, where I saw that and I suddenly remembered this from Mega XLR. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except in this case, <laughs> uh, where uh, vinyl and Terry uh, sing, uh, I mean, play. A harmonic tune. Oh boy, Coop does uh, some really cringy singing in turn. <laughs> <laughs> That's called karaoke. Yeah. Which is Japanese for tone deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but let's see. Oh boy. Silver, I, I, and also you, Jacob, uh, if, if you do know, how are karaoke whatever is done there? I honestly have what? no idea. Uh, usually we have, like, a, it's a bar mm-hmm. and a, a stage rather than in private ah, rooms. Okay. All right, all right. Because over it's here... It's been years since I've seen anyone sing karaoke, to be honest. Oh, really? No. Okay. Because yeah. um, over here we have uh, kind of a, a private room or a box and whatnot, and uh, people go and pay the, what you call this... Uh, cashier and whatnot to uh, claim hours and whatnot. So we have that. And also some places, uh, like Silver mentioned, uh, we have per- private rooms where we can have um, drinks and snacks. Uh, I recently went to one where they have a personal toilet. That was like, wow, <laughs> okay. Yes. So if people say that song was the shit, <laughs> it may have actually been... <laughs> Pooping! Yeah! <laughs> oh, boys. <clears throat> Unfortunately for but me... I, the poopy do. Uh, I do have one more thing. Uh, well, I was wondering, well, uh, what did uh, Student 6 actually do throughout this uh, story? I mean, were they even necessary? Or are they more just at the standing for the main six who are just doing the, you know, moral support for the, for those that are actually acting here? Uh, I feel, personally for me, I, I don't know about Silver, I, I feel like the Student 6 here, at least Gallus and Smolder, are quote-unquote the instigator to get things moving. And uh, that's about it. Uh, like, after that, you have Ocellus who was trying to be, trying to be the diplomat, where uh, she's trying to reason with Soundwave and trying to be on his good side. Even geeking out about um, Ravager. Kitty! <clears throat> well, by the way, it's Ravage, not Ravager. Ravage. Oh. Why did I think about Ravager? Well, what, 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 why? Well, I mean, there's there's many interpretations of Ravager. Holy. Huh. Uh... But for me... Most uh, there are a few references that I find kind of funny. When Soundwave said Operation Jericho, uh, I, I had to look it up. It was a bombing of a uh, in occupied France of World War Two, where the Allies were trying to one blow holes in the prison walls, kill the guards, and use shock waves to open the cell doors. Did it work? Did it work? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've got mixed results. Uh, out of 832 prisoners, 102 were killed by the bombing. It was hardly a precise project. 74 were wounded. 
258 escape, but two thirds of the escapees were recaptured. Mm -hmm. So not, I don't know what one would call a success or not, but, uh, <laughs> but basically they're using explosives and well, it's sound wave, but shock wave is stealing the cred to, uh, escape a prison, which I found rather funny. <laughs> Then, of all things, when uh, they have the harmony blast, Yona thinks this song is Blaster. So they did get him into this comic, at least. Uh, fun fact, Blaster is not a good magic card. What? Well, I can't, I can't, I can't speak to Magic the Gathering. Is, is there a Blaster card for magic? Oh, yes. Remember back then, Silver, when I, talk, well, when I was talking to you about... Um, hey, Magic the Gathering is doing a crossover with Transformers and blah, blah, blah. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, yes. Legendary artif artifact creature. Mm -hmm. So basically, you can... That's a polite way to put it. Yeah, basically, you can... How to put this? Um, in terms of magic, when your creature is legendary, it's, it's, it's kind of a special thing. But anywho, um, I got all of them silver. <laughs> There we go. Because one thing, they're stupid cheap, and another thing, uh, they're they're fun. Like they're they're really fun. Also, uh, remember when I was asking you about what are this art and why does Optimus Prime look purple and green and evil? Oh yeah, yeah the the shattered mirror. Yep, yep, yep. Funny yeah, enough, our our C was not there. <laughs> Mm, I don't know if I've seen a Shattered Mirror RC. Nope. Uh, if they were, uh, it, she would be in the cart list. But nope. Nope, nope. But look at Soundwave, man. Oh, shattered. <laughs> he looks cool. Shattered Glass, I should ah, say. Sorry, my bad. But look at Soundwave in the Shattered Glass thing. He looks cool. He has a headband and he's doing Kung Fu. <laughs> sorry to derail. Just have to, just to I point that out because it's cool. <laughs> Wait, what are we doing? What we're we doing against the right, yeah. ponies? Sad wave knows kung fu. Whoa. <laughs> yep. Uh, can, can I move on to the next one or um stuff? <laughs> all the stuff. All right. Jacob, you good? Get on with it. Get on with it. All right, get on with it. So this one, mm, <clears throat> uh, this one. Okay, if you notice right. They didn't really put the title in the start of the issue. Uh, like, the first one was called Sick Beats, and the second one is called The Beauty of Cybertron. So, yeah, uh, no title dropped in the page. So, okay. So, anywho, we see some bots kind of dismantling a truck, stripping it for parts. Uh... And we see that these are all bots that are mind controlled by King Sombrero. And we see that Ratchet and Rarity are trying to, well, capture them so they can figure a way to free them of their mind control. But right, Silva? Yep, they're in the phase one of finding a cure, which is get a test subject. Yep, yep. So. That's what they're doing and trying to um, do that. So they bust in with nets and all, and they capture one. Yay! And when they check to see their trappy, it was just knockout. And he isn't even mind control, he's just there to loot. <laughs> oh, you. <clears throat> So, Prowl just uh, lambasts him for his um, un uh, for his attitude and whatnot, <coughs> and uh, they, they just say that okay, um, help us <coughs> or be destroyed. Your pick. Well, not really destroyed, or I'll just scuff up your paint because it seems that. Knockout here is, um, how do I put this? He's a bit 
Vague? No, no, vague. What's... He's fabulous. He's fabulous. <laughs> One way to put it. Vain. Is that true? Is that the right word, Silva? Vain? Oh, yes. Yes, he's very vain. All right, so he's, he's vain and looks matters to him, I think. Well, at least for now. At least for now. But Silva, can you explain about Knockout for a bit? Because I think I remember him, but I it, everything's 50-50 on me. Well, let's see here. This knockout, uh, I have to double check if there was a previous knockout iteration. He was introduced in Transformers Prime, and he quickly became a fan favorite character. Mm. Uh, he is he is very much vainglorious. Mm -hmm. He he ha he worries about himself. He wants to. Uh, how shall I put this? He wants to have the best look on whatever world he inhabits. And he actually is absorbing some of the Earth culture, which puts him at odds with the more elitist Decepticons. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where things get a little bit touchy. Mm -hmm. uh, in BotCon 2011, Ooh. A uh, fan asked the production staff of uh, Transformers Prime, is Knockout gay coded? Uh, and he is. Uh, he is gay coded. Okay. And people were cheered for that. But then the one of the producers just kept talking, and that was a mistake. Because he, he joked that when Knockout was created, uh, Vector Sigma, the supercomputer that basically helps give birth to Cybertronians. He said it had a glitch. And that earns more than a little bit of people's ire. What do you mean? Uh, when Vector Sigma was creating quote-unquote knockout, he was glitching? He basically... Yeah, to say that, yeah. just, you to just, say that being gay is a mistake or some such. Uh... So... He meant it as a joke. I don't think there's any... I'm not going to assume intended malice. It just was not the right thing to say. Mm, I see. Better to say Vector Sigma doesn't make mistakes. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, that's terrible. Anyway, um, looking at Knockout on the TF Wiki, I remember him. I like him. He, he was different from the rest. And uh, if you... Spoilers for this show if you haven't watched it. Near the end, he shifted to um, the Autobot side just because he didn't really agree with the Decepticon stuff and whatnot. So yeah, that, that was fun. Uh, looking at uh, him, yeah, he is... I remember him. He was fun. He was a fun character. Apparently, Dark well, and Pretty Colors aren't his style. Oh, no, not at all. But also, he was joining the winning team. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that also... He, like you mentioned before, he was he was in it for himself. <clears throat> but he may be altruistic. He never made a return in the... Uh, in uh, Robots in Disguise, unfortunately. Yeah, like, oh, man. So, we never knew his fate. Remember... Oh, sorry. Uh, remember the... A continuation to Prime, where is Bumblebee's show? Yep, that's Robots in Disguise. Yeah, like, the, it's it's too bad because he was a fan favorite, and just wanting to see what happened to him was kind of cool. But no, we, we didn't get it. We didn't get it. Well, <laughs> and uh, also checking on the Transformers wiki. There have been a lot of knockouts over uh, the years, mm. but they've all been lesser roles. A Decepticon Micromaster, Land Military Team in Armada, so another Minicon. Mm. Uh, let's see here, Autobot Motorcycle and Revenge of the Fallen. Well, no one, no one can <sighs> notice that. Oh, God. Yeah. Autobot Can Am Spider in Speed Stars. I don't know that. <laughs> Then going forward, it would be in Battle Masters uh, in the IDW comics. But I think it's very telling that when you say knockout, this is the character that people recognize. This is whom they think of. Oh, that is true. And also uh, for people who watch the series, because if I'm not mistaken, not many people do watch this one, right? What, Transformers yeah. Prime? 
Oh, actually, no, it was very popular. Uh, it had a lot of resistance going in because to air Transformers Prime, they had to prematurely end Transformers Animated, and that made a lot of fans steam. Oh, no. But in time, Energon won them over. Mm. <clears throat> All righty, then. All right. Oh, oh, sorry. In time, Prime won them over. Energon is regarded as one of the worst series in the franchise. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> Oh boy. So anyway, uh, let's continue on. <clears throat> so uh, they move on to kind of investigate stuff and they talk for a bit. They, they banter and Rarity is kind of digging uh, Knockout. And Knockout is also uh, having a lot of conversations and whatnot. And <clears throat> Knockout here just it's like he 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 sees like rarity say i'm not sure uh, uh, um uh, i may be a bit confused and rarity says like oh, okay i i can see <clears throat> sorry for what's it worth uh knockout dear uh, if you're dedicated to beautifying things i say this world needs you alive <clears throat> and with that um knockout just says uh this uh, true as that may be i can i can let you return to equestra thinking cybertron it uh it entirely so brut uh brut brutish brutalist a uh, brutalist uh wretched so uh, they go sightseeing so uh, knockout shows the radiant Slayers uh, on their cosmic migration. They show him a titan. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is a dinosaur, right? Triptychon? Let's see here. Oh, uh, Triptychon? No. Well, that's not his city mode. Oh, really? It's somewhat of his color scheme. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. But this issue, while we're on this picture, this issue is a good foreshadowing for the future events, especially since uh, Jim Sasmus was the one that's writing the finale for the series. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, he shows a titan, and also, uh, uh, pam pam pamper yourself, uh, yourself, the natural energy on springs, blah, blah, blah. And as they look, there are some bots siphoning or stealing engines and oh no uh it's their friend or at least it's uh knockout's friend breakdown so okay um you don't need to threaten me into action <laughs> my partner is one of them okay just tell me the plan so he's there uh motivated to save uh what you call this to save <clears throat> Uh, his friend. Oh wow! By the way, um, continuity error. They, the the what you call this? The bomb, or the yeah, the, the explosive on knockout's shoulder is not there anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now I know this. Yeah. Anyway, let's give a short break because someone's coming in. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, uh, well, are we allowed to talk during the break? Oh, just talk, man. Just talk. Either or, this will be entertaining. Uh, while we wait for this person to come in, uh, I'm just gonna stop here and just ask, what do you think so far? I like that uh, Rarity has found a sort of a equal and opposite in a Decepticon. Last time she simply paired up with RC because they were the girls. But now we're dealing with the, the fashion minded, the fabulous of both sides. So I love seeing Rarity and Knockout uh, play off one another. Ratchet, even though he's drawn in the G1 style, they've pretty much adopted the uh, Transformers Prime personality from him. Older, bit more impatient, crotchety. I'm surprised he didn't go ep, ep, ep. But he will, we will get a, I needed that. Which is always fun. 
So Raju is perhaps the long-suffering member as he has to deal with two uh, fashionistas instead of one. And he's not he's not a bot who uh, is able to get outside his comfort zone very often. Hmm. Well, while Norman uh, is sorting out whatever sort of uh, technical brouhaha is going on, I guess uh, I guess we will continue because we're at the rescue phase. Basically, thanks to Breakdown's tour of the beauties of Cybertron, they actually discover that Sombra's controlled soldiers are at the uh, uh, Energon Springs. So. And of course, his his good buddy and well, I'm guessing non-platonic partner, uh, Knockout is there. Oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> Knockout is with Rarity. No, this is Breakdown. His partner so, in well, crime. Oh, I think partner in more ways than one. So while Rarity provides a distraction, Ratchet is trying to gather all the mechanics the uh, mechanics needed to try and liberate these mind-controlled Transformers. Problem is, he's apparently not very good at organization, something Knockdown finds abhorrent. So instead, he just grabs a little something and hits the mash button. And, well, honestly, this rescue operation is a bit like Operation Jericho. A great many of the mind control Transformers just simply go back to Sombra. And unfortunately, uh, well, even Breakdown and another Transformer, whom I don't recognize, are still under his control. Let's see here. There's a, here's the thing. Ratchet, in his usual sarcasm, talks about friendship energy and using that to uh, liberate these taken minds. Lo and behold, that's where he says that's actually accurate. And so, well, they try just that. And thanks to the uh, magic of knockout and his feelings for breakdown, they reach out and are able to free him from mind control. Thus, they found a way to break Sombra's control as long as each Transformer has some friends handy. Or the, I guess, the magic of My Little Pony spreads friendship magic through everyone. Friendship. <laughs> oh, God. Of course, this requires a very strong heart-to-heart -heart from uh, knockdown to break, knockout to breakdown. It's getting very hard to uh, get keep all these names separate. And so we close out the comic with Sombra watching uh, his slaves bringing Energon from far and wide. He's keeping an eye on the protagonists and laughing that they're too late to find a cure. That's not good. And that's where the issue ends. Hello, I'm back. Uh, just ah, welcome back, Norman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Just um, in the last moment. Yeah, sorry about that. Well, I hope you don't mind, Norman, but I went and I, I summarized the last bit of this it's issue. It's all good, man. It's all good. I, um, I hope you introduced <clears throat> Terra. <laughs> you know, I don't think we did. Oh, yay. Te hey, Terra's here. Yay. Glad to be here. <laughs> yay. I'm, I'm happy to be back here. <laughs> yay. Well, you know, I say, we said, hey, so Terra, it's good to hear your voice. <laughs> so, anywho, um, I, I, I guess that's a wrap. But before that um so uh, I, I guess we could go with Terra since we haven't heard from him in a bit so Terra final thoughts and what do you think about this comic well I mean I haven't because uh what is it I read through one and two and I didn't know that they met beforehand so uh, I am a bit confused but at the same time I also like the crossover speculation of you know my little pony with transformers bit odd to see but cool to see at the same time and how well they get along with each other and how they're able to use the power of friendship because you know friendship can conquer anything uh, did you know that that's a, that's a science 
There has to be something behind it. Science can solve everything, according to some people. Yep, indeed. So, anywho, uh, Silver, what do you think? Final thoughts? Well, uh, well, they final they've set up. Uh, I, I agree with Jakob that uh, they are really setting up for the final conflict with this second half of the uh, comic. And while no- Knockout and Rarity are sort of in the main spotlight, I was mostly entertained by Ratchet's long-suffering sarcasm. Uh, even when he mutters, she's a talking magical pony with a fashion career. Why did I expect anything less? <laughs> The only thing that I'm amazed by is that Rarity would dare wear this mind control, this uh, mind helmet with a light bulb on top. It looks decidedly unfashionable. I, I, I mean, I was, sorry, go ahead. Is the, is the term God that fits this description? I, mm. May very well be. But at the same time, too, when you're dealing with science stuff and trying to save, quote unquote, the world... That doesn't really pop into your mind, does it? Oh, oh! With rarity, it absolutely will. I, I'm surprised she didn't try to bedazzle it on the spot. <laughs> ah, so true, so true. So, anywho, um, that's all, Silver. That's all for me. Then, uh, Jacob, what about you, man? Well, honestly, these two issues have been more or less uh, good. But there is something about the the second issue that's... I, I'm not sure if it's a problem, but it's more like the way that the crossover structured is going to leave a bit of holes for when we finally hit the finale and the uh, final issue. All right, all right. But other than that, the, these, two stories, these two stories are good. Oh, oh, cool, cool. Awesome, awesome. And as for me, all right, the first one... Uh, the first one was just good. It was just awesome. Uh, looking at Soundwave, because everybody knows Soundwave is superior, uh, it's just awesome. Like, looking at him doing the stuff, and Vinyl, v- Vinyl getting to play her bass cannon is just too awesome, too. And when you combine the both of them, it's just 20% cooler. <laughs> boy and then the second uh, part this this one was an interesting read because you have um ratchet being in the lead where with rarity and these two are the exact polar opposite where you can tell that they got nothing in common except to save their friends <clears throat> And the, the, the start is just uh, goofy at best. So when they captured, uh, what now, Knockout, uh, that's when the comic really starts. So we see that the interaction between Rarity and Knockout is kind of believable. And you, you can really tell that uh, Knockout here is really trying to show Rarity that this place is not trash. It's really good. Like uh, the universe itself, like what we have here is just awesome. And, ah, uh, man. What what else did you talk about with uh, beat, uh, beat, break, the breakdown, Silver? Well, mostly that he's, he's both uh, Knockout's partner in crime and probably partner in other ways. Mm-hmm. You know, if you if you take my meaning, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I, I, uh, all right, all right. Oh, man, while, while I was reading that part, right, I was thinking, oh, are they going to? Hmm. Oh my. Are they going to? Hmm. And and in my brain, like, okay, maybe beat down is a really buff girl robot. Hmm. Nope. 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 So, all in all, uh, it's rather interesting to see that relationship going on. Yep. So, I, I guess that's it. That's it. Uh, let, let's wrap things up before I put more foot in my mouth. 
So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dimensionalgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt YouTube and on Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me on Ko-fi and Patreon and support my videos. Uh, again, just look for MLP Silver Quill. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, Jacob, where can the good people find you? You can find me on DeviantArt under the username Yakafontodkat, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Timor Rising, you can find it on filmfishing.net, which hopefully after the hiatus that's been going on for the past month, will come back on either today or tomorrow. Yeah. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy, I think called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome. And we have a Terra. Terra, where can good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortero1324, or they can always look up on my Patreon page as well under the same name. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Give me a second. Also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and also stitch the radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also get us on polyblive.com. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I will take, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, myself, Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. I'm Jacob. And I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. Been so long since I heard that. <laughs> uh, but it's all coming back to you, right? Yes, the memories and the uh, good memories, not bad memories. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Now uh, we can just end it here. <laughs>